Hey there, Booksy, welcome back to my channel. Today we're back for the next installment in the read aloud read along of My Angelus, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. We've been reading together chapters of this book. I've been reading aloud and maybe you've been following along or maybe you've just been listening to me read. And thank you, thank you for being here. I had hoped that we'd have been finished with this book during Black History Month, but Black History is every day, every month. So we're gonna continue. We're now up to chapter 19, which in this edition is on page 144. So I invite you to either open up your book and read along with me or listen to me read. If you're new to the series and wanna start at the beginning of the book, previous chapters are linked in the playlist in the description box down below. So go ahead and start there. Otherwise, we're going to begin with chapter 19. The last inch of space was filled, yet people continued to wedge themselves along the walls of the store. Uncle Willie had turned the radio up to its last notch so that youngsters on the porch wouldn't miss a word. Women sat on kitchen chairs, dining room chairs, stools, and upturned wooden boxes. Small children and babies perched on every lap available, and men leaned on the shelves or on each other. The apprehensive mood was shot through with shafts of gaiety as a black sky is streaked with lightning. I ain't worried about this fight. Joe's gonna whip that cracker like it's open season. He gonna whip him till that white boy call him mama. At last the talking was finished and the string of long songs about razor blades were over and the fight began. A quick jab to the head. In the store, the crowd grunted. A left to the head and a right and another left. One of the listeners cackled like a hen and was quieted. They're in a clench. Lewis is trying to fight his way out. Some bitter comedian on the porch said, that white man don't mind hugging that nigga now, I bet you. The referee is moving in to break them up, but Lewis finally pushed the contender away, and it's an uppercut to the chin. The contender is hanging on. Now he's backing away. Lewis catches him with a short left to the jaw. A tide of murmuring assent poured out the doors and into the yard. Another left and another left. Lewis is saving that mighty right. The mutter in the store had grown into a baby roar, and it was pierced by the clang of a bell and the announcers. That's the bell for round three, ladies and gentlemen. As I pushed my way into the store, I wondered if the announcer gave any thought to the fact that he was addressing as ladies and gentlemen, all the Negroes around the world who sat sweating and praying glued to their master's voice. There were only a few calls for RC Colas, Dr. Peppers and Hires Root Beer. The real festivities would begin after the fight. Then, even the old Christian ladies who taught their children and tried themselves to practice turning the other cheek would buy soft drinks. And if the brown bomber's victory was a particularly bloody one, they would order peanut patties and baby roots also. Bailey and I lay the coins on top of the cash register. Uncle Willie didn't allow us to ring up sales during a fight. It was too noisy and might shake up the atmosphere. When the gong rang for the next round, we pushed through the near sacred quiet to the herd of children outside. He's got Lewis against the ropes, and now it's a left to the body, and a right to the ribs, another right to the body. It looks like it's a low. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the referee is signaling, but the contender keeps raining the blows on Lewis. It's another to the body, and it looks like Lewis is going down. My race groaned. It was our people falling. It was another lynching, yet another black man hanging on a tree. One more woman ambushed and raped. A black boy whipped and maimed. It was hounds on the trail of a man running through slimy swamps. It was a white woman slapping her maid for being forgetful. The men in the store stood away from the walls and at attention. Women greedily clutched the babes on their laps while on the porch, the shufflings and smiles, flirtings and pinchings of a few minutes before were gone. This might be the end of the world. If Joe lost, we were back in slavery and beyond help. It would all be true, the accusations that we were lower types of human beings, only a little higher than the apes. True that we were stupid and ugly and lazy and dirty and unlucky and worst of all that God himself hated us and ordained us to be hewers of wood and drawers of water forever and ever, world without end. We didn't breathe, we didn't hope, we waited. He's off the rope, ladies and gentlemen. He's moving towards the center of the ring. There was no time to be relieved. The worst might still happen. And now it looks like Joe is mad. He's got Carnier with a left hook to the head and a right to the head. It's a left jab to the body and another left to the head. There's a left cross and a right to the head. The contender's right eye is bleeding and he can't seem to keep his block up. Lewis is penetrating every block. The referee's moving in, but Lewis sends a left to the body and it's the uppercut to the chin and the contender is dropping. He's on the canvas, ladies and gentlemen. Babies slid to the floor as women stood up and men leaned toward the radio. Here's the referee. He's counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is the contender trying to get up again? All the men in the store shouted, no! Eight, nine, ten. There were a few seconds from the audience, but they seemed to be holding themselves in against tremendous pressure. 
The fight is all over, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get the microphone over to the referee. Here he is. He's got the brown bomber's hand. He's holding it up. Here he is. Then the voice, husky and familiar, came to wash over us. The winner and still heavyweight champion of the world, Joe Lewis. Champion of the world, a black boy, some black mother's son. He was the strongest man in the world. People drank Coca-Colas like Ambrosia and ate candy bars like Christmas. Some of the men went behind the store and poured white lining in their soft drink bottles and a few of the bigger boys followed them. Those who were not chased away came back, blowing their breath in front of themselves like proud smokers. It would take an hour or more before the people would leave the store and head home. Those who lived too far had made arrangements to stay in town. It wouldn't do for a black man and his family to be caught on a lonely country road on a night when Joe Lewis had proved that we were the strongest people in the world. That's chapter 19. We'll be back for chapter 20 next time. So until then, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Please subscribe if you're new to the channel. And if you haven't done so already, I'd love to talk with you in the comments. Let me know if you're enjoying this book. If this is a reread for you or re-listen, as the case might be, I'd love to discuss with you what you love about this book and what's keeping you coming back for more of these videos. So let's talk down there. And until next time, happy reading. Bye.